It's time to defund the bishops and their unholy alliance with the Democratic Communist Party. Join us in Washington, D.C. or watch our live coverage July 20th, 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. A Catholic Archbishop is pushing back against Pope Francis' call to legalize homosexuality. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Build Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, some good news. Uh, Pope Francis, you know, has, has said that homosexuality should be legal around the world, but it sounds like one African archbishop disagrees. Tell us about it. Uh, Brad, uh, this is really good news because as we have reported earlier, uh, there are several African bishops, particularly the Ugandan archbishops and bishops, who have dared to defy Pope Francis on what is perceived to be Pope Francis's pro-gay agenda. And on Thursday, we had the Archbishop of Blaintyre in Malawi, uh, Archbishop Thomas Luke Musasa, leading a, a crowd of over 5,000 Catholics, evangelicals, and Muslims protesting against uh, the, uh, you know, possible attempt to legalize homosexual relations in Malawi. So the, I guess the question would be, why now? Why were they protesting at this time? What ignited this particular protest? Uh, there is a Dutchman who is uh, living there. His name is Jan William uh, Axtar. And there is a Malawi transgender person by the name of Jana Gunami. And these two have mounted a legal attempt uh, to get rid of the country's laws that, uh, you know, uh, basically criminalize homosexual relations. Uh, the law in Malawi is very strict. Uh, you can go to jail for up to 14 years if you're caught uh, engaging in uh, sodomy. And then, of course, uh, this is not unique to Malawi. Uh, there are 67 countries around the world, uh, most of them African and Muslim countries, Arab countries included, that uh, criminalize sodomy. And incidentally, uh, some of them are a relic from Britain's colonial past. Eleven of these countries, uh, you know, uh, prescribe the death penalty for sodomy. So what's the, uh, what's Archbishop Masusa's specific reasons for wanting to, to keep the laws criminalizing homosexuality? Why is he pushing back against the gay agenda in his country? Uh, obviously, it's his uh, strong Christian faith. Uh, but he also says that if we change the way we live as a family, I'm quoting his exact words, it means we will cease to exist. If we continue to marry a man with a man, he says, surely the offspring, no children will come, then no life in the world, no life in Malawi. Remember, Brad, uh, Africans are very strong. African culture is very strong on uh, procreation. And uh, you're a man in one sense only if you have been married uh, and if you have children. And uh, uh, homosexuality is the polar opposite of that. It's not only the negation of a God created uh, mar marriage, but it is also the negation of procreation because homosexuals cannot procreate. And uh, that is primary, primarily the reason why many Africans stand shoulder to shoulder against the Western imposed agenda of, uh, you know, loosening up uh, L the LGBTQI uh, agenda. You know, defending the common good, I mean, he talks about ceasing to exist. Existence is a rather basic common good that needs defending. And uh, the good archbishop is saying that sterile relationships fostered by the LGBT agenda uh, really go against that basic common good of existence. Now, those things 
which harm the common good are understandably outlawed. But yet Pope Francis tells uh, countries around the world, but especially speaking to African countries, to stop outlawing homosexuality. Can you catch our viewers up to speed on, on, on that that we've covered here on Rome Dispatch and elsewhere uh, on Pope Francis's uh, opposition to criminalizing homosexuality and how he even wants such laws removed from the books in the countries where it is criminalized? Absolutely. In the context of his uh, apostolic uh, journey to South Sudan, and in January of this year, he gave an interview with the Associated Press, and that went viral around the world. And basically, he said that, uh, you know, he addressed this particularly to bishops, and he said that bishops who uh, want to continue to, okay, he said this, uh, the church should be in the forefront of fighting to repeal laws that criminalize uh, uh, homosexuality. He then went on to say that bishops, particularly bishops, who uh, still favor the criminalization of homosexuality need to undergo a conversion and they need to feel tenderness towards people who are homosexual. Uh, uh, Pope Francis incidentally went to South Sudan, as we know, with the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Justin Welby, and Welby with the Church of England totally going crazy on the uh, homosexual juggernaut, now the transgender juggernaut as well, and just you know, steam rolling uh, vicars and other Christians who hold on to biblical principles on homosexuality. Uh, it, it's it's a rather disturbing that the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, who is not even Catholic, and uh, Pope Francis see eye to eye on this agenda of decriminalizing homosexuality throughout the world. You know, putting aside the morality for a minute, you know, uh, people having sexual relationships outside of matrimony is something that uh, for all of us is, is a commandment, a grave sin. And you would think the shepherds of the church would want to protect us from committing grave sins. But Jules, Francis has often spoke against what he calls ideological colonization on a completely different level here now, isn't this his call to cancel laws in countries that criminalize homosexuality a form of ideological colonization as he defines it? And, and what's been well, the reaction of these African bishops to his efforts to change laws in their countries? Well, uh, Africans uh, say that Pope Francis seems to have a blind spot when he calls uh, for an end to ideological colonization, but himself uh, holds on to, you know, what is primarily a white Western agenda, uh, an agenda that is incidentally increasingly opposed by Muslims living in the West. We've seen protests, massive protests recently in Canada and Christians getting together with Muslims and fighting the uh, gay agenda in schools. Leave our children alone is what Muslim parents are saying. And we, we've seen this, you know, people from the third world generally seem to not want uh, the Western countries to shove this agenda down their throats. And Pope Francis really needs to ask himself what precisely he means when he talks about ideological colonization and why is this uh, LGBT juggernaut not part of this? In fact, one of the major uh, components of this ideological colonization we see today. That's a very good point. Now, Archbishop Masuza, you mentioned uh, Muslims pushing back against this. It's very interesting to me that Archbishop Masuza is actually a convert from Islam. Can you speak about that, his conversion, and also how he's gaining support uh, from Muslims and evangelicals in his fight uh, against the LGBT agenda in his country? This is one of the best parts of the story, Brad. It's so inspiring that uh, this uh, archbishop who comes from a tribe where 99.9% .9 of the people are Muslim, he met Christ when he was uh, 12. He went to the priest, asked for baptism. Uh, the boy was baptized and uh, the archbishop told the priest, I want to become like you, what do I do? And so so he ended up uh, being a seminarian and then a priest. 
And believe it or not, after he became a priest, his father, who was an imam and had disowned him, came to him, fell on his knees and said, son, I want you to baptize me. So it's not only the archbishop, but as a priest, he baptized his own father, converting from Islam. And uh, the archbishop continues to be passionate about the gospel. Uh, he says that in his diocese, when he goes for confirmation, there are at least 20 to 30 people at every confirmation who are converts from Islam. And, uh, you know, uh, 300 or 400 people from Islam come to faith every year in his diocese, come to faith in Christ. So uh, it, it's wonderful. And what is very encouraging about this whole thing is that a Muslim convert, an African archbishop, is standing up for biblical truth, standing up for sexual morality, uh, standing up against the gay agenda when so many of our uh, Western uh, you know, politically correct prelates have just gone down, you know, the like the Gadarini swine down the mountainside, uh, actually joining the push for, uh, you know, the liberalization of homosexuality. And Jules, now you're saying also that he is getting, uh, he's working hand in hand with Muslims and evangelicals and fervent Catholics in his own country now to push back against the gay agenda. It's not just a Catholic thing. Catholics, Muslims, evangelicals, they're all pushing back against this. Can you talk about well, that? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's finding common cause here. And clearly they see him as a beacon of light, as a beacon of biblical truth, uh, because that is what uh, Muslims and evangelicals want to see in a Catholic leader. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the, your question reminds me of a story we did on uh, the uh, situation in Birmingham, in Birmingham, England, where hundreds of Muslims gather day after day after day to protest against the, uh, you know, their children, four-year-old children being sexualized and indoctrinated with the whole LGBT agenda in schools. And when I wrote to the Archbishop, the Catholic Archbishop of Birmingham, and I said, you know, you talk about interfaith dialogue, you talk about interreligious cooperation, now is the time to act. Uh, show solidarity with our Muslim friends. There was total silence and the Archbishop of Birmingham distanced himself from these Muslims at the time when they needed to see, uh, you know, a beacon of light shining forth the most. Yeah, true ecumenism starts with common sense people with, with common values and Christian values working together. Now, as the gay agenda picks up steam around the world and in and outside the church, it's really refreshing to know that some good bishops are defending all Ten Commandments especially the sixth commandment that forbids sex outside of authentic marriage for everyone, for all of us, straight and gay alike. Jules, thanks for, so much for this good news story and for your insightful comments. Thank you, Brad.